right, we are back. We got the Christmas tree because Christmas is on the horizon. And this is the new studio as we go into 2021. If you've watched any of our other videos, we've had some different recording locations. This is the new central location and this first John 416 verse is going to turn into a mog sign pretty soon and the vibes will be the vibes will be right as we as this is the new hub yes, for recording. So as I said it's Christmas. Merry Christmas to all you who are watching. We're going to kick this off with some Christmas trivia with Bishop. And then we're going to hit up hit up just just something slight in the word for some encouragement. Yeah, so we got some Christmas trivia for Grant. See if you know your Christmas Christian knowledge, let's say. So cue the non-copyrighted Christmas music. I don't want to be copyright striked because uh, that would suck. So here's question number one. Are you ready? Yep. <clears throat> Which Old Testament prophet had the most to say about the birth of Jesus Christ? Well, there's th there's some major prophets. I don't think it'd be any of the minor prophets. Isaiah's got 66 chapters, and it's pretty it's pretty thick. So Isaiah's what I'll go with. That is correct. Isaiah is correct. So you got one so far. How many we one doing? for one. Five. All doing right. five questions. All right, second question. List three names of Jesus found in the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. Prince of Peace? Yes, that, there's one. Uh, counselor. Wonderful yes. Counselor. Yes. That's in the Psalms a lot. And Shepherds in the Old Testament a lot. Yes. All right. How many were there? How many different ones are there? There's a lot. You have Emmanuel, which will tie into the next question. Um, the Christ, um, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, uh, the Lamb, and then the ones that you listed. All right. So you're two for two. What is the meaning of the name Emmanuel? God with us. That doesn't, yes. That doesn't take no degree. Give me the next question. All right. All right. Three for three. Two of the four Gospels do not mention the birth of Christ. Which two? I know John is for sure one. Okay. You got one. I know two of them got different genealogies in them. That's talked about a lot, but... Some... Is it Matthew? John and Matthew? No. What is it? It's Mark and John. Mark and John. Mark, Mark and John. All right. Three for four. What are the three gifts which are mentioned being given by the wise men? I have no idea. Well, um, probably some some sort of gold, obviously like things that would hide Jesus to high esteem. Sure. Yeah, gold's one of them. Gold. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember that sort of sapphire. No. Any clothing? I have no idea. No, I, th <laughs> I think the one's like a fragrant spice. Mm. And then the other one I think Myrrh. Also... Is it like myrrh? Yeah. No, myrrh. Myrrh's the second one. Okay. And then there's one more. I, I just know that I say that word a lot. That's in the Bible. Ah. Is this a material thing too? Yeah. I think it's... I'm pretty sure it's a... Sackcloth. No. <laughs> no. No. It's like a... Oh. It's like another oil spice. Like an oil, anointing oil. Yeah, like um, yeah. What's I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure the woman that uh used her spices, like her spice oil for Jesus. Remember that one scripture yeah. passage? I'm pretty sure this is what she used. Okay. What is it? What's it say? Frankincense. Frankincense. Yeah, I should have known that. Sorry. Right. Three for five. <laughs> That's it. That concludes Christmas trivia. You cut out the Christmas music. <laughs> Throw it away. <laughs> All right. I can't believe I didn't get the gospel one or that. I should, I should, I should have been one hundred percent. All right. So, in terms of Christmas time, we got this Christmas tree here. But what do you think, Bishop? What do you think about this Christmas? It's a different Christmas. Some people are going out, being with their families. I mean, yeah. Some people are laying low, no contact. It's a weird. It's a weird year. It's been would, a weird year, and it's coming to a close. Yeah, it's weird because uh, a lot of us, or at least I know a lot of people that can't visit their family, 
because of COVID restrictions, especially because mm-hmm. at least in PA we're shut down again for a little bit, which makes things difficult for people coming in from out of state. So, I mean, we don't really do anything big for Christmas. It's just everybody that's local family wise. So it doesn't really affect us, but I know a lot of people that it affected. So having those restrictions, having that going on, I think it's made it difficult for a lot of people to enjoy uh, seeing their family during Christmas for yeah. sure. makes it weird. It's weird with, you're not used to this. Usually for the holiday season, you're ready to get together, hang out with the family, give gifts, receive gifts, not wearing masks, giving right. people hugs. This year, there's some red flags on what can I and can I not do. Right. And not only that, mental health is at a all-time low. Yeah, it's a lot crazy. of people aren't out here singing Christmas songs. Are closed in their bedroom doors in the darkness. It, in the dark, cold. Ne- needing some scripture. Needing some, some truth of scripture because that's the thing. This is what brings sheds light on the darkness. And there's a lot of darkness right now. And there's no scripture. People aren't bringing the scripture there. So that's what we're, that's what we're about to do right now. So we're not going to go into anything deep and extensive like we do sometimes. We're just going to read this one verse. A verse Bishop and I have been talking about just in our own lives and so it's second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation old things have passed away behold all things have become new so paul's writing to the church at corinth here but we're really just going to focus on what this verse means and for application today whenever we accept christ into our lives there's a mysterious transaction that happens where all of our transgressions and iniquities are forgiven and washed white as snow. Right. And we are created new in the image of God. We inherit Christ's righteousness, which talks about in Romans, into our spiritual bank account. And that is what makes us a new creation. Nothing that we do makes us new. Right. It's us putting on Christ's white robes through all that he did on the cross. And in this verse, that's the new creation. That whenever we are in Christ, we are a new creation and the old has passed away. What does it mean when the old has passed away and all things have become new? You can say what you think about that, but old things passing away, I'm sure you know in your own life, as I know in my own life, we are prone to wander away from Christ right. even when we have accepted him into our lives. Once we accept Christ into our lives, a lot of times we don't understand, all right, now we're in a war. Now we're going to have to be fighting against the prince, the prince of evil and the uh, just all of the strongholds that are on the evil side. And we're not a lot of times we're not ready and equipped for that. Right. And so even though we are this new creation, we need to be able to take the weapon, the weapons that Christ equips us with to be able to fight that old nature that has been passed away Yeah. because it's going to come right back at us. And Satan wants us wants to get us at that lowest point especially in these times when there are a lot of people who are Christians, who are new creations, who are still experiencing these feelings of melancholy. And there's nothing wrong with feeling those, but what are we combating them with? And a lot of times we don't know how to fight. Christians don't know how to fight, or we just forget how to fight when we're supposed to be fighting. And it tells us here the old has passed away. That's something to rejoice in. Those old sin nature tendencies those can be stripped away and where you're given weapons that are not of this world, but are of the spiritual realm. It talks about that also in the new Testament. Mm -hmm. I'm forgetting the, forgetting the exact reference, but we're new in Christ. And that's just as true as it was in 2015. That is, is in 2020. If we're accepting Christ into our lives now, the old has passed away just as much as it has five years ago. And we need to embrace that truth because we don't deserve to be new creations. Mm. We were low, we were dirty, and we don't deserve to be able to put on the white robes that Christ has bought for us on that cross. And that's a message that is very comforting in this time where it doesn't, the old feels like is present, but the old isn't present. The new is still present. And we need to hold true to that because in a time right now where there are so many different messages being thrown at us, this is the one thing that is still objectively true and can bring peace and comfort to people that are wanting 
answers. And luckily, as born again Christians, we are new creations. That doesn't mean that we don't struggle still with mm-hmm. things of the past, but how are we fighting? And during Christmas time and going, obviously, as soon as Christmas ends, and it's like, bang, now it's New Year's in 2021. How are we living? Are we living as old creations still being thwarted by all of the old sin tendencies that we have? Or are we embracing our new create? And it's hard. It's not easy with all of the circumstances that have been brought upon America with COVID and just a lot, a list of other things that are probably going on in people's lives. What are we, what are we doing with what we know about what Christ tells us in the Bible? Are we taking this seriously? What does this mean to us? Because there's some comforting stuff here that we should be able to rejoice in. Yeah. I, um, I think like throughout this year, I think a lot of people are like, Oh, I can't wait for 2021. I can't wait for that to roll around. Everything's going to be better. Yeah. We have like this mentality that once the 2020 goes away, everything's just going to like a, a, like a switch is going to just like oh, yeah. flip. Like so many people died this year, just famous people. Like we, we started off this year with Kobe dying, which was crazy. Yeah. And everybody thought that, that was going to be the worst. So everybody thinks like magically 20, 2021, all this bad stuff's going to go away. People are going to be dying less. There's going to be no pandemic, but the pandemic's not going to go away. It's going to be following us who right we, into the who, beginning who of Who are we trusting in in 2021? Right. Who are we trusting That's in? That's true. That's true. And I think a lot of us, a lot of Americans at least, were stressed recently over the, the recent election, which we won't get into that. But, I mean, we have all these stresses going on. We have a pandemic. We have probably the most confusing time in, in American history on what our ideologies are, what our morality, what, what's our what moral is what? code, what, is what, what do we believe in. Who is who. Exactly. So what is this? Exactly. And we need to be able to find our identity, not only in Christ, but we need to be able to read the word in Matthew, Matthew chapter seven, we get the Beatitudes and that gives us a code on how we should act, not how we, not how we are acting now, because obviously it's a code that is so unobtainable, right? It's how Jesus lived perfectly, but it's how we should be living just like Jesus Christ. And we need to read that. We need to not only read that, we need to meditate on it. We need to consume it. And then we need to go out into the world that's hurting right now from a pandemic, and we need to have fellowship. We talk all the time in church. Now, more than ever, we have an opportunity to have fellowship with other people. Right Now, more than ever, we get to share our love and shine and be holy and be set apart and act different when the whole world's on fire. Now's the time for that. I think a lot of people don't pay attention to that. I, w- I was looking up an article earlier, um, and a lot of countries, because of the pandemic, a lot of the like um, services for mental mental health, mental care, were shut down. Uh, over sixty percent reported disruptions to mental health services for vulnerable people, including children and adolescents. People that are relying on these services for their mental health, it's gone, or it's very hard to have that service. So what happens, right? Like, what do you what do you do in those moments? We need to rely on this. We need to re- rely on this for our solitude and our mental health. As our sustenance. We need to rely on the Lord. For our sustenance, for our mental health, and yeah. for our for our thinking straight forwardness, looking up to the Lord, seeing what He wants us to act like, seeing what He wants us to be, because right now a lot of people are confused. A lot of people are confused. We have a lot of stuff, and we're not going to get into it, but a lot of scandals and stuff going on in mainstream church, mainstream Christianity, that even brings in a whole another wave of like confusion. Like we thought we knew these people, we thought that they were preaching the straight word, but sometimes that's not always the case. And so that's a big that's a big thing. But what do we look at? We look at the word. You have Paul. Paul's writing to churches that are failing after he's setting them up. He's going in, he's setting them up, and then he's he's not like abandoning them, but he's relying on them to be able to handle themselves because they are so on fire for the Lord. And you have them failing time and time again. He's writing all these letters to them. That's where we get some of the books that Paul's writing. And we need to see what what's the mistakes like. It's not that the mistakes we're making today are new. They're not new things. Like there was still confusion about. All, all this stuff that we're, we're having today. Who, who do we put our identity in? Do we listen to the government? Do we not listen to the government? We have a pandemic. Like, it's absolutely crazy. What do we rely on in our mental health? This has been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. This is what Paul's addressing in his time. Yeah. And so, like, even when I think that we don't have answers in the Word, the answers are right here. Exactly. They're everywhere. You just have to look. You have to dig. In Ecclesiastes or Ephesians, it says, uh, it talks about digging into the Word diligently, looking for the hidden treasures in the Word. 
And that's what we need to be doing. And then we need to consume it and meditate on it, like I mentioned earlier. But yeah, it's a time where <clears throat> it's a time where people are looking for answers to questions more than ever because yeah. people. Yeah, Mayor, in America, you're used to waking up, going to your job, doing what you do, make money, bring it home, get your paycheck, keep going, keep going. Right. The reason you're seeing all of these things is because that no one, no one wants to stop. Everyone wants to keep going, and that that makes sense. But whenever things do stop, you have a little more time to think, and whenever you have more time to think, you have more time to raise questions, and when you have more time to raise questions. You're going to want to find truth more. And right. then when these people are coming to the conclusion with all of this extra time they're having that they want to find truth, they're not going to the right source of truth. And we can't stress enough from Genesis to Revelation how everything in this is to be taken seriously. And a lot of people want to know answers. How am I saved? How do I know I'm going to heaven? How mm -hmm. do I know? And <clears throat> Romans 10, 9 speaks to it exactly because there's certain things, there's certain gray areas in the Bible of what can I and what can I not do? And me personally, if you look at, uh, just to raise a topic, mental health, mm -hmm. when do I win and when do I go to see a therapist? When do I not go? Right. When do I just solely rely on the spirit, Holy Spirit? When do I actually go seek professional and, help? And when do you? When does it get to a point where you can be honest with yourself enough to say, "Okay, I have actual issues that I need outside help from somebody that is a professional in this that can help me get through this issue." When do you come to that realization? Exactly. And when do you know that, like, it's not that God isn't sufficient enough, but because he is, he is. But sometimes, like. Chemically speaking, your brain can just have like depression is a chemical thing. Not to mm -hmm. say that the Lord can't heal depression, but sometimes you need to go to these outlets of like therapy and things like this, accompanied with right spirit spirit filled teaching. Yeah, and that that is that that is above the professional help. But that being accompanied with pro professional help, sometimes it's not a bad option. Right. But is there an exact verse that tells you when to do that? No. But if we're actually doing what the Bible says, telling us to be men and women of prayer, we're going to know exactly what to do. For another example, relationships. What can I not do in a relationship right. before marriage? There's no verse that says it exactly because if there, was an if there was a verse that said it exactly, you'd see a lot more finger pointing about, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. But we need to be <laughs> going into 2021. There is a lack of discernment. We mm -hmm. need people who are better in the church with discerning what the word of God is saying and then being honest with it to people that need to be taught what it's saying. Mm -hmm. And then they need to be Bereans as well and also seek what it is saying because this is not to just be played with. These verses aren't just to be thrown out and slapped on the wall and just looked at as some little encouragement message that you just get a buzz from whenever you put on your phone in the morning. No, it's something mm -hmm. to be lived by right. because when you live by it, you're being the light that Christ calls you to. And this is just what I want to read in Romans 10 verse nine. If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved for with the heart. One believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's how are we confessing our sins time and time again? Who are, who are we believing in? God doesn't give us some weird equation. I say it a lot like you do this and then 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 you're saved. He gives you it right here. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, are we confessing that Jesus is our Lord? And then are we not only confessing it, are we living it? Right. Are we scared whenever man asks us who we follow? Do we say, uh, 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 or do we say, I follow Lord, the Lord Jesus? And whenever they laugh at us, how, how do we take that? Because Jesus says, blessed are the persecuted. Right. Verbally or, or physically. It was a lot more physical then. And it is still physical in certain parts of the world. But in America, a lot of times it's just like, you're weird if you follow Jesus. But right here, are we confessing with our mouth Jesus, the Lord Jesus, and believing in our heart that God raised him from the dead? 
Because if so, we are saved. We're not. We're saved from eternal damnation. And that, again, people want comfort. That is a comforting message. You're saved from all of the pains and the aches that you see so many people experiencing right now. Right. So take those things and continue to seek, seek, seek during this Christmas season. That is the greatest gift. That is the greatest. That is the grace of God that we're even able to come to this Christmas in 2020 and still be able to say. God is sovereign. God is still on the throne. God still knows what he's doing and still has his plan. We see in the Old Testament, there's a lot of times in the book of Habakkuk, where Habakkuk, the minor prophet, is saying, God, what are you doing right now? Right. And God says, I'm still on the throne. People, A lot of people are looking like Habakkuk right now and saying, God, what are you doing right now? What is going on? Be, a, be someone who's good at discerning the word of God, pray for discernment, pray for wisdom, like it talks about in James, and it will be given unto you so that you're able to see what Christ is doing. And whenever we get into that pr quiet prayer place that Christ tells us to, and we're not just being pharisaical and praying groups of people, but truly taking the time to step back by ourselves and pray alone with Christ, right. we will become better discerners of the world. And we'll, we will be able to go out in 2021 and be able to be people who are the reason for why 2021 is a great year because right. nothing's going to change if people continue to live the stagnant Christian lives that are always being lived amongst the church. But we need more spirit filled lives that Paul talks about in first Timothy and, um, it's just encouraged all throughout scripture. Right. I think that, um, yeah, going along with that, going into 2021, we most definitely need to set the tone, not only, as Christians among a very sinful world, as holy and set apart, but also with inside the church. Because right now we have a lot of confusion, like I was talking about. This year, extreme, like more than anything I've seen, extremely confusing. For our generation, we've had to answer a lot of questions, probably younger than generations previous to us have had to answer. Big questions. Especially with all the stuff going on in government and all that. Set aside. Um, we need to be able to look at this, especially with progressive Christianity, which I think we will most definitely address more in detail what progressive Christianity is, some of the dangers of that, because it's dangerous in, in multiple ways. What the Bible says is true. What the Bible lays down is the law. Because right now with this confusion mixed with progressive Christianity, the church, Christi Christianity as a whole, as a body, as a people in Christ, slowly drifting away from that holy aspect of being set apart. We're starting to blend in a lot more with the world, and that's dangerous. This is not a political ideology. Right. This is the word of God. You can't politic like it the Bible is not meant to be politicized. And unfortunately, I think that in our government and in our society it has been a little bit politicized, most definitely. And I think that a lot of mainstream Christianity and progressive Christians want to take it as political. That's not what we're supposed to do. You look at ancient Israel, you look at when they take the promised land, they were told to expel pagan religion and pagan practices, not tolerate it and be amongst it. And then maybe, okay, we'll reform what we're saying, or we'll form our whole entire structure as a nation under God so that we can be alleviated by societal pressures around us. No, they were told to expel the pagan religion and expel all of those things, completely deny them. Say so that's not what the Lord wants. The Lord wants you to be set apart. Israel was supposed to set that example, and now the Christian church is supposed to set that example to the world and bring people to Christ. But we can only do that if we are holy, if we are set apart. And by taking on all of these worldly practices and sinful natures, we're just starting to blend in more and more. How are we supposed to have an impact as a Christian body on a hurting world, on people that need the Savior, if we just look like everybody else around us? Right? Like, that's a big issue, and I think that's something that our generation especially but a generation before us, the Christian body as a whole right now, needs to answer going into 2021. We need to set that tone because this year has been confusing and we need to come out of it strong, yeah. most definitely. In Hebrews, it tells us to be holy, but not only holy, which is different, but set apart for God. If we're being set apart for God, if that mm -hmm. is being truly lived out in our lives, right. you're not going to look like the world. And like Bishop was saying, what we can really slap a definition on of whenever you don't know what that looks like is you're probably living a lukewarm Christian life. And mm -hmm. that's not a thing. But in Revelation, whenever John receives the vision of the seven churches, the lukewarm church is Laodicea. And that's the warning to them is being neither hot nor cold. 
and they're warned for this and they're rebuked and they're told to repent and come back to Christ. And right. the thing that's beautiful about it, he tells us repent and come in and dine with me. Even though you're living in this world of, or living this life that is stagnant, repent and come in and dine with me. And it's beautiful imagery that Johnners are seeing here and inviting this church to do. And he's the same invitation is true today for people who are taking the word of God and kind of fumbling with the scriptures right. and not actually taking the scriptures and saying, okay, this is the word of God. I'm going to handle this more diligently than anything in my life. And the next thing that I handle isn't even going to come close to how I handle this because mm -hmm. this is the code and conduct of how I will live my life. And nothing from anyone else's mouth that isn't the word of God is even going to begin to convince me to start thinking another way because this I know is objective truth inspired by the Holy Spirit. And so let's take that invitation that is given to the Church of Laodicea to repent. The offer, that's why Christ came and died on the cross to offer repentance to us, to offer a chance to repent, um, the opportunity to prevent. And he's so patient with us. We keep saying, when is Christ coming back? When is Christ coming back? When is Christ coming back? And that's something that you'll hear a lot of people who are all aren't, um, who aren't Christians, that's a lot of time that they'll poke fun at is when's your God coming back? Look what, look what's going on in the world right now. Right. Is a good God going to allow this? Well, actually it's right here <laughs> in second Peter chapter three. You hear these people come in and say, Oh, look, look, look what's going on. Why is your God allowing this? But Peter in second, these same objections, like Bishop saying, nothing's changed. Nothing has changed back in second Peter. People were still making the same objections of where's your God. And he says in second Peter chapter three, but beloved, do not forget this one thing that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but here's the key, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God knows what he's doing. He's keeping his promises. Right now we are in the age of grace. Um, the chance to repent, the chance to do what it says in Romans 10, 9, which we read earlier, and to become a new creation is still on the table. But whenever we go a little past second Peter and we read revelation, there is an age going to come where God is going to judge, going to judge. And right now, right here, it says, what is he doing? He's long suffering with us right now. Mm -hmm. Why? So that none should perish. Mm -hmm. So it's not that, Oh God, God isn't a good judge. God isn't righteous. No, there's people that are still in this dark and hurting world that Christ knows are going to come to repentance and he's long suffering with them. So, cause he doesn't want anyone. He loves us so much that he would leave the 99 for the one. Right. And there's still that one in 2020 and in 2021 and what's to come. And until then we don't know the day nor hour. We are to still live with the big picture in mind mm -hmm. as well as the present right. because we still have to go out into this dark and hurting world, but we have to be expecting Christ to come at any moment because there are a lot of things that point to his coming in this, in this time. Right. But it's not that Christ doesn't love us. It's that he's long suffering with us and we need to understand what that means so that we can rejoice in that and then go out and still be the light because there is people out there who Christ wants to come to repentance it's his will. That's his will. If you want to know the will of God for your life, it's for you to live a Holy Spirit filled life. And through the spirit, find those people who God willing through the Holy Spirit come to repentance because they're still out there. And that's why we haven't seen Christ return yet. Right. Yeah. I, um, I agree with that. Like, it's so crazy. You look at all these parallels, like a lot of people think, well, now we have a lot new, like a lot much, um, a lot newer issues going on in the world. And there's some truth to that. We have some newer things through advanced in technology and as a culture and as a humanity, right? That we have new technology. We have phones. We have access to things like the world has never seen before. We have Peter, laptops. Peter, Peter didn't have Bible Hub. Right. He didn't. But you know, Peter also didn't have pornography just sitting on his phone. He didn't have those temptations directly right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen the numbers. Our generation especially is devastated by that. 
And good thing that there's a lot of movements going on right now that's actually cutting that back and getting some regulation in that area because it is awful. It is straight from Satan. And it has ruined a lot of young men in our generation. That's one of the reasons, that's one of the, the reasons behind us wanting to start MOG is to have that culture be online where you can come into a brotherly community and join others worshiping in Christ. Because it, sometimes it feels lonely. It feels really lonely being a Christian, being a young Christian man. And you see that in the Psalms with David. He doesn't always feel great. He feels right. lonely a lot. The, the Bible is vulnerable. It right. doesn't tell you everything that's pretty, and you hear that a lot, but it really doesn't. You see humanity straightforward how it is in your own life, in society, but you see the sweet gospel message, and that's something that we need always at all times more than ever. But right now, people want comfort, and the only place you're going to find comfort is, is, is inviting Christ into your life to live with you and commune with you and dine with you like we were reading that he invited the church of Laodicea to do. What are we doing with that news? Are we are we truly believing that? Or are we trying to still find these things that are being brought forth by Satan and the, and the one who is evil and mm -hmm. just thinking, oh, those things, those things are what is going to make me content. Pornography will make me content. This drug will make me content. Right. If, I get, if I force myself into this relationship and make it work somehow, then I'll be content. And then it doesn't. And then you just dug a hole even deeper and you're going to have to dig so deep into the point where you have nowhere to look but here. Right. And you're going to find out all along that in Proverbs it says that he'll let you taste of your own fruit because he just did. And now you're – and now after you've tasted, you've seen, okay, I messed up. Lord, forgive me. Right. And you're – but, but, but people, people are neglecting that message more than ever right, right. now because there's just so many of the – Satan is infiltrating so many things into this world where people aren't having a Merry Christmas anymore like they should be. They're having a Christmas full of thoughts that are going through their minds that are making them go insane instead of being able to rejoice when there is every reason to rejoice this Christmas than there has been any other Christmas. Right. And I like what you were saying with substituting all of these worldly pleasures instead of using Jesus Christ as our place of comfort. Now, there's some people watching this video, they've been di diligently reading the Word and been in that Word. But there are some people watching this video as well that are still using all of those things instead of the comfort of Jesus Christ. And the message to those people is wake up. Seriously, like, just wake like, up. Just like has, was given to all of those churches in Revelation. Wake up. Right. It's okay that you were asleep, but wake up now. Yeah. And get back to work. Because what, what happens? We fill all these worldly pleasures in place of Jesus Christ, and then something like the pandemic comes in, boom, hits us really hard. You have depression, and then you have all of these things circulating around your mind. You're on your phone. You have Twitter. There are t people talking about politics on Twitter. There's bad news coming in through Instagram. Where's this come in? Where's that come in? <laughs> it's filling your mind with all of this crazy stuff, and then what do you do with your life, right? You don't know what to do with yourself, but this book literally tells you how you should live your life. It literally tells you how you should live your life, and how you should treat others. And I think that, especially in the Bible, being selfless and being a servant to others gives you personal joy. I know that when I've served other people, when I've been selfless, it's put my heart at rest. It's something that it does. you got to do it because it, it, it's hard to explain until you actually serve somebody without asking for something in return. But you have to use this Bible. Use the word of the Lord. Use Jesus Christ as your source of comfort. And now, how do you get to that point? Maybe you're on Instagram, maybe you're on Twitter, maybe you're on Snapchat, maybe you're on TikTok. A ton of apps feeding a ton of crap into your mind every single day. Random stuff. It's garbage. It's garbage. It's garbage. It means nothing. It's not eternal. It's vanity it's, just like King Solomon exactly. knew back in Ecclesiastes. It's vanity. You want to talk about a New Year's resolution, cut those things out of your life. At and, least take a break. The, and wipe the dust off this and get into it. Exactly. At least take a break and start digging into the Word. You might say, well, that's radical. But that's how you're, you're supposed to be. We're supposed to be radical. You want to be lukewarm? You want to say, well, I still want to use Snapchat. Or, oh, my I, I still like Instagram. My Instagram feed's popping. I'm liking the likes that I'm getting. Likes aren't eternal. That's vanity. That's a lot of vanity. So maybe cut back on the social media and get into your word more going into 2021. Start serving other people without asking for something in return. Like you just said right there. 
serving other people without asking for something in return. Because that's what we're living by. Right. Christ Christ has given us something and doesn't ask for anything in return. What he asks for in return is our lives. Right. In living for him. We're not giving him our lives whenever we are consumed by things on social media. Consumed by how others portray us to others. Yeah. Whenever we're consumed with those things, Christ is giving us salvation, eternity with him. Right. A relationship that we were meant to have from the foundations of the earth and where our identity is found. And he asks, live for me, take up your cross every day for me, whatever that cross may be. Our cro- everyone's cross looks different because we all struggle with different things and live for me. Mm-hmm. And whenever we are living for that, then it's going to reflect. And like you just said, we're going to be doing things for people without anything in return. But why? Because we know what's been done for us. And when we know what's been done for us, truly, in our living a a life that is stirred by the Holy Spirit, nothing's going to stop us from just wanting to serve, wanting to not forsake the assembly, wanting to be a part of things like Mog and just other things because you taste and see like it talks about in Hebrews and want, you just know, you know that your identity has been found and is correct in those things. And what the world's telling you is darkness Mm -hmm. and you're so much more able, you're so much more equipped to be able to discern and see this is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. This is right. And you'll always be able to do that through what taking it through the lens of scripture, because that's the only thing you're going to find objective truth. So as we're closing out here, Mm -hmm. wish you a Merry Christmas. It was a pretty int, pretty just, there's a lot going on as this yeah. year comes to a close and a lot that Bishop and I, as we addressed in the last video, are looking forward to do with this channel. But one thing we're looking to do is also in our own lives, as we can probably admit, we have not all, we've kind of always looked like the church of Laodicea at certain times in our life being lukewarm. And we're looking to go into 2021. Well, not only right now and take these things more seriously, develop these things more seriously because there's people out there who need to hear the word of God and yeah. we're, and it's right living whenever we are doing those things. So we send that encourage not only to ourselves, but to anyone who's watching yeah. because that is what makes Christmas merry yeah. is whenever we're living for Christ. And, and one more thing talking about giving selflessly or, or asking or doing something without asking for something in return. There's a lot of people, like we were talking about in the beginning of this episode, they can't go visit their families because of COVID. Or maybe they've lost somebody because of COVID. Somebody that's elderly in their family or with somebody at risk. Why don't you shoot them a text message and say, hey, what's up? I've been missing you. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Even a a little text like that goes a long way for somebody that's lonely and hurting and might secretly be depressed or struggling with mental illness. And maybe that's even a foot in the door to speak the gospel into their life. Or to grow in Christ with them. Yeah. I'm telling you, like, without being, like, we go on social media to be selfish, really, and get the attention being on, being on us. I mean, yeah, there's some c- cool things that you can look at, you can have feed, but we want the attention on us. Why don't we take the attention off of ourselves for a minute and actually just, just talk to somebody genuinely because we care for them. Because the Lord commands us to, to be brothers and sisters in Christ and love one another and build one, an- one another up in Christ. So, so shoot somebody a text. That maybe you haven't talked to in a while because you don't know what's going on in their life, right? Especially with this pandemic. Probably some crazy stuff. It goes a long way. So, yeah. Merry Christmas to everyone tuning in as we'll post this video before Christmas. Thank you for watching. And there's a lot of great stuff in store for 2021. Peace. Peace.